Since time immemorial, people attributed mystical properties to photographs. Some say that if a picture has become blurred, it's a sure sign that something bad will happen to this person. Some believe that pictures can reveal something an ordinary eye can't see. Some say that if you take a picture in front of the mirror, it will attract evil entities. And even nowadays, taking pictures of sleeping people looks disturbing and creepy. But what if supernatural entities really existed, but were unseen by a naked eye? What if some stories and urban legends about vengeful spirits and ghosts were true? If we start talking about horror and survival horror in the context of video games, usually such games as Silent Hill and Resident Evil come to mind. And of course, they left a huge impact on the genre you cannot underappreciate even today. And even after years, it still fascinates me how interesting it may be to dive into their stories and development process. But for now, I would like to talk about a series that is considered one of the hidden and less known gems of survival horror games with its unique flavor, style and gameplay. I'm talking about Fatal Frame. Just like many other Japanese games, this series may be better known as Project Zero or even just Zero in Japan. This game was developed and released by Tecmo in 2001. That year was definitely something. Max Payne, Devil May Cry, Final Fantasy X, Metal Gear Solid 2, Silent Hill 2, GTA 3, Gothic, in other words, I would not be surprised if you didn't play this game in the year of its release. To tell you the truth, the first game from the series that I touched was the third one. Couldn't finish it though because I was too scared. And only years after, I decided to lay my hands on these. And I was, and still am, surprised how well the atmosphere is built in those games. At least the first three installments of the series. Resident Evil made an emphasis on dealing with more physical threats like viruses, zombies, parasites and even mold. Silent Hill took a more psychological approach and even religious approach. The cult, horrible monsters created by someone's mind, tragic experience and memories. What else Japanese horror has to offer? Well, probably ghosts or better say a Japanese word, yurei. There is a reason why I call these restless souls not just ghosts but yurei. You probably don't know much about me, but I used to study Japanese at my university. Culture, religion, history, folklore and literature to some extent. Even for this video, I rechecked some information and read a couple of books about yurei and yokai, which turned out to be barely relevant, but I'm sure this knowledge will be useful. This way or another, I noticed that western ghosts appear mostly as restless souls with some unfinished business. Not always, of course. Sometimes they want justice or harm only the people who treated them poorly when they were alive. Once again, not always. There may be exceptions. But most of the eastern ghosts, or more specifically Japanese ones, don't actually care about who to harm mostly. Of course, some of them may be friendly, but most of them don't care whether you specifically did something bad to them. If you entered their domain, they will chase you and do something bad to you. The most vivid examples must be Japanese horror movies The Grudge and Ring. If Silent Hill and Resident Evil aimed at European audience, despite the fact that those games were still created by Japanese studios, Fatal Frame takes Japanese folklore, Japanese setting, Japanese protagonists and some of the Japanese beliefs and builds the story around all of it. That was quite unusual for the time. Let's find out what this story is about. The story revolves around a certain Himuro mansion in 1986, a place of interest for many folklorists and lovers of urban legends. It is believed that in this mansion horrible rituals were performed, and every person who entered this mansion didn't live long after that. The prologue introduces Mafuyu to us, a young folklorist who came to this place completely alone at night, looking for Junsei Takamine, a famous novelist and a couple of his assistants who were searching for a book by Rosa Munakata, and wanted to collect information for a new story. This is the place where control is given to players. We see that the mansion has been abandoned for a long time, Unlike the mansion from Resident Evil, for example, buildings in Fatal Frame are presented in traditional Japanese manner. 
we have a fairly large building. Such traditional Japanese houses are called minka, by the way, with extensive surrounding areas, which includes some temples, gardens, underground tunnels, and even a small lake nearby. Inside this mansion, Mafuyu will meet a couple of ghosts. Some of them are neutral to Mafuyu. Some of them will try to harm him. And here comes the main difference from most horror games at that time. Obscura Camera, that I already mentioned in the Evil Within 2 analysis. We'll dive into gameplay features slightly later, but for now, all you should know is that it can reveal and repel ghosts. We're not quite sure where Mafuyu found this camera, and why we can find film for this camera inside the mansion, but we'll get to it. Mafuyu finds Junsei Takamine's notebook and sees visions of his group. Slightly after that, he got captured by ghosts as he left the camera behind. Before going to the Himuru mansion, Mafuyu left a note about his whereabouts. Two weeks after Mafuyu's disappearance, his sister Miku enters the same mansion trying to find her brother. After their mother committed suicide, they are the only family members left. Since childhood, they possessed a sixth sense that allowed them to feel and see things other people can't see. Along our way, Miko will stumble upon ghosts or their souls that will show the last minutes of their death. We will also find a lot of notes and manuscripts about other people who lived there and what's been happening in this mansion. In some notes, we'll find information that not long before death, some people could find rope marks on their limbs. Soon enough, Miko will find the same marks on her limbs as well. The game is split into four chapters, or nights, and they are dedicated to different periods. I should point out that the mansion and its territory are huge, so despite Miku has a map of this place right from the start, sometimes it's really hard to navigate there and decide what to do next. Nevertheless, the places are very well intertwined. I couldn't expect less from the studio who had experience with Deception series, where the main goal was to add more rooms to a huge castle and place appropriate traps there. Fortunately, some spirits are related to what's been happening to this mansion and sometimes appear showing the way, making the navigation a bit easier. The most persistent and even friendly will be a little girl in white kimono. Of course, the mansion is full of puzzles, secret passageways, hidden doors, seals and tricky locks. Besides repelling ghosts, the Obscura camera is also able to show some symbols, hidden places and break seals. Speaking about the plot, it's quite a common thing in Japanese stories and even stories about Yurei to have a lot of characters. If you're interested, you can check a story about Oiva-san to understand what I'm talking about. This game is not an exception. It even has its relationship tree that replenishes over time to show the connections between characters. Many rituals and customs have been passed down through generations of the Himuro family. Most of them are lost. The only thing we have left now are some documents that recorded these rituals as a legend. One ritual in particular performed on December 13th is shrouded in mystery. People who lived near the mansion stayed inside on that particular day, and even now, it is considered bad luck to leave the windows open on that date. The thing is that under Himuro Mansion, the Hell Gate is placed. It is said to be the entrance to the land of the dead. Every 10 years, the seal that holds the gate would weaken and the gate would start to open. Himuro family was the one responsible for keeping the gate closed by performing sacrifices and a so-called strangling ritual. It's not quite described how these gates appeared or what consequences to the world might occur, but we know that the last strangling ritual failed and caused the calamity, and 1,347 souls were lost.
in order to perform the strangling ritual, some other preparations must be done. First of all, the demon tag ritual or the blind demon ritual. There is some confusion about how this ritual is carried out, but I will use resources only from this game and how I understood it. Girls of the minimum age of 7 years, 9 months and 25 days are gathered at the mansion in a relatively small place to play the game. A young woman, blinded maiden, with a mask on her face that serves as a blindfold, leads and has a role of a demon in the game who has to catch all children in the room. The first girl caught will become the next blinded maiden in 10 years on November 26th. She is thought to have the worst spiritual powers or to be blind to the spirits of the Hellgate. Her literal and spiritual blindness is used to dull the spirit's senses. Why is this girl wearing this mask is called blinded maiden, you may ask? Because that mask not only covers one's eyes, it pierces them through. The last girl caught in the demon tag ritual is believed to have the highest holy power and is chosen to be the next rope shrine maiden in the strangling ritual. After that, the girl will be shut down from the outside world for 3669 days to get rid of all earthly attachments. Even people who perform the rituals had to wear masks we can find in the game to depersonalize members of the family. I do appreciate how every element in the game tells a certain story what this or that room was used for and even what happened there. December 12th, the night before the strangling ritual, the rope shrine maiden is taken to the moon well, where the four family priests and the Himuro family head would perform a small ritual. The rope shrine maiden is supposed to purify her body with moonlight at the bottom of the well. The moonlight shines down to the bottom on the night of the ritual. The bottom of the well is connected to the basement and only the maiden uses this path to reach the basement. According to the legend, the first rope maiden was buried in the moon shrine. On the 13th day of the 12th month, a maiden, cut off from the outside world for 3669 days, shall willingly lie on the altar and be bound right hand, left hand, right foot, left foot and then her neck. The four family priests and the Himuro family head would turn the winches attached to the ropes and rip her body apart, saturating the ropes with maiden's blood that will give them the power to seal the Hell's Gate. Stop! Oh. No. After that, they had to place a sacred mirror on the altar in front of the Hell Gate and seal it. But after the ritual was failed, the mirror broke into five parts, and one of the objectives of the game is to find all of them. The last shrine maiden called Kyrie not long before the ritual saw a man and fell in love with him. Somehow they managed to spend some time together. The chief priest noticed that those feelings might harm the ritual and after some time, the man stopped visiting Kyrie. Kyrie was told that the man returned to his home village, but she was sure that something bad happened to him. She felt uneasy that something bad might have happened to him because of her. And indeed, the man was hidden, but actually, according to some notes and pictures, he was killed. The feeling of anxiety, guilt, anger and desire to find her beloved one failed the ritual on December 13th, 1837 and caused the calamity. When the ritual was being performed, Kiri's soul split into two. A horrible and furious Yuri who wants to avenge everyone she sees and tries to unite with her beloved one and a little girl in white kimono who asks to stop her. You've probably noticed that the man Kiria fell in love with looks just like Mafuyu. What a wonderful coincidence you might think. Or wow, such a lazy work. Indeed, if you're not familiar with Japanese religious beliefs, it may look at least confusing. But here's the thing. There are two main religions in Japan, Shinto and Buddhism. Rebirth, or better to say reincarnation, falls under the religious beliefs of Buddhism. And if you look at the situation from the perspective that fate brought these two lovers together even after their death and one's rebirth in another body, it may sound not silly but pretty romantic. That's why Kiryu doesn't harm Mafuyu as she just wants to be with him. And the strangling ritual is described as a Shinto ritual, 
although I haven't found any evidence that such a cruel ritual ever existed. However, ropes and threads play a huge role in the Shinto religion. For example, shiminawa are lengths of laid rice straw or hemp rope used for ritual purification. These ropes can be found in different places, but commonly they are associated with something sacred, pure or objects to attract spirits and gods. After finding all pieces of the sacred mirror, the last piece of which was hidden in the camera, we may purify the evil spirit of Kyrie and help her close the Hellgate. At this point, players may see one of two endings. The normal ending shows us that Kyrie closes the gate, but the tunnel is about to collapse. Not willing to leave Kyrie alone, Mafuyu decides to leave his beloved sister and the only relative and stay, and probably die with a completely unknown woman who kidnapped him. My duty is to keep this gate closed. The Mafuyu ending is available only after finishing the game in Nightmare difficulty. In this ending, Mafuyu decides to be reasonable and leave the place with his sister. <gasps> Look, their souls are all going back to where they belong. Kiria. She was always struggling for life. Her soul must remain there, keeping the gates sealed off for all eternity. She had to sacrifice everything. These souls may rest in peace but her soul will always suffer, forever and ever. Ever since that day, we stopped seeing things that other people don't see. As I've already mentioned, the main tool that helps us to get rid of the ghost is Obscuro Camera. You might wonder where this camera came from. Well, I'll mention the creator of such cameras in later videos, but this exact camera Mafuyu and Miko inherited from their mother and grandmother. In order to make things easier, I've made this simple family tree. Miyuki Hinasaki, the mother of Miko and Mafuyu, had the same supernatural power. She inherited the Obscuro Camera from her grandmother, Yaya Kurosawa. 
Yes, I too hate all those relation schemes, especially with names I'm not really used to, but bear with me, this will be important for future videos. One day Miyuki Hinasaki, the mother of Miku and Mafuyu, found her mother's old camera and began taking pictures. It is believed that the camera started to drive Miyuki crazy, so eventually she committed suicide by hanging herself. The sad fact is that Miko will see her mother in the game and even will have to fight her. In other words, Miku and Mafuyu have some connections to this mansion, since some of their predecessors used to live there. At first developers wanted to make players use torches and ofuda, aka talismans or amulets, to repel ghosts and run away. While playing, players may see a filament in the right bottom of the screen. It represents the filament in the camera and serves as an indicator that there are spirits and ghosts nearby. The filament shines brighter if we are looking in the right direction of spirits or ghosts. After that, we may enter a first-person view or the viewfinder mode, where there is a circle of focus or capture circle, several symbols at the bottom, a number of remaining shots, two health bars, one is Miko's and the other is Ghost's, and a couple of additional indicators about which I'll talk pretty soon. The more this or that Ghost stays in the capture circle, the more charges our mystic power meter will get and the more damage we'll be able to deal. The camera mostly focuses on faces, so you always have to try to keep ghosts' faces inside the circle. There are four types of film in the game, and the rarer the film is, the more precharged it will be. Don't worry, you'll barely run out of the film, but even if you do, you may collect the weakest film at save points completely free of charge. The closer a ghost to you, the faster your shot will charge, so probably the best way to fight them is to keep them at a medium distance. And if at the beginning it's relatively easy to do, but closer to the end some enemies may become furious. Besides, Miko is not a pro runner, so she moves pretty slow even while running. Ghosts may go through walls, so our capture circle cannot detect them. Some of them may disappear and appear in a completely different place, for example right behind you or close to your legs. Some of them may move really fast. Some of them don't have heads and they appear for a limited time, and since the camera focuses on faces, it may be really hard to catch the right timing to deal damage. Fortunately, we can upgrade our camera with spirit points. Every successful shot gives us points. The more damage dealt, the more points you will get. Besides that, there is a so-called zero shot. Get it? And you may perform it when the capture circle turns orange, which usually happens right before enemies attack. This approach became the credo of the game. You have to overcome your fear. Wait until the last second and then you'll get rewarded dealing the most amount of damage. If you're fast enough, you'll be able to deal more damage and get more points and even slightly confuse and push back your enemy for a short time. Special shot, the killing blow. If you hit the ghost with full charge when its health is low, you get a big bonus for overkill. Core shot is a very well aimed shot. You'll see a small targeting circle tracking an enemy ghost when you have it in your capture circle. If you can line up the inner crosshair of the capture circle perfectly with this tracking circle, you can earn the core shot. Of course, all these shots may stack together. And if there are multiple enemies, you may earn even double or triple shots, but it happens very rarely. You may upgrade your basic performance like range, which widens the capture circle, speed, which speeds up charge time for mystical power, and max value, which increases the maximum charge value of mystical power. There are some auxiliary or bonus functions you may also unlock. They are C. It helps you to see enemies that like to fade and reappear. Paralyze. Freezes your enemy for a short period of time. Search. Your finder will automatically track the ghost. Pressure. Pushes your enemy away. Slow. It slows the movements of the ghosts. Unfortunately, these abilities are limited by the number of spirit stones you may find on the levels, so you better save them for tough battles. The number of remaining spirit stones in the chosen bonus function is displayed in the right bottom corner of the viewfinder. I've mentioned ghosts and spirits here, but the division is rather arbitrary. I call ghosts or yuri aggressive enemies who attack us, and call spirits just random souls on the levels. If we find the approximate place where such a spirit may be, the filament will shine blue, 
we'll hear a slight static noise and the controller will start to vibrate. If we take a picture of them, we'll get some additional spirit points, and they may reveal some useful places. Besides that, those blue souls even have a special name to call them. Hitodama, the combination of kanji's human and soul. You might see this presentation of souls in many popular works. There is another stone in the game that is called Stone Mirror. If a player runs out of health, the Stone Mirror will automatically restore it. In other words, it gives you one extra life. Herbal medicine and sacred water are also used to restore your health. After finishing the game, you'll find some extra features, which have a positive effect on replayability. After finishing the game once, you'll unlock battle mode, sound check function, unlock special functions for your camera, and get a new costume for Miku. Battle mode represents 20 missions, where you have to battle ghosts and receive points. You can't use any healing items during battles, you have only one spirit stone. You cannot change your enabled bonus or special functions during the battle. You can start a new game plus, but you won't be able to change your difficulty level unless you finish all missions and finish the game once more with normal difficulty. And this decision is absolutely incomprehensible to me. Also after finishing the game, you'll find out that all those spirits you took pictures of had their short descriptions. If you miss some of them, the slot will be blank. But we'll get to it literally in a couple of sentences after we finish discussing special functions. I think it's pretty fair to call them passive abilities. Only one function can be chosen at a time. They don't require any consumables and some of them are really hard to get. Let's go in order. Zoom. You'll be able to zoom in or zoom out your shot. And in my opinion, zooming out is much more useful since it allows you to track your enemies much easier. This ability will unlock right after your first walkthrough. Sense. Enables a radar that allows the camera to discern the direction of a ghost. Four little arrows will appear around the targeting circle and will show you which direction to aim in. This ability will unlock after you finish all missions in the battle mode. Track. Allows you to track ghosts automatically, so you won't have to aim. You have to beat all missions in battle mode with S rank, which is not that easy to do. None. It allows you to take pictures without requiring any film at all. And it becomes available after finishing the game in Nightmare difficulty level. While playing in Nightmare difficulty level, you'll notice that the damage ghost steal is approximately twice higher while playing in normal mode. Besides that, you won't have the filament that help you to indicate where the ghosts were. And Zero. Probably the most powerful ability of all. With this one, the mystic power meter will always be charged at max. But to get this one is probably the hardest task of all. Do you remember that list of ghosts I mentioned earlier? To get this ability, you have to get the pictures of all 108 ghosts in the game. At first it doesn't sound that tough, but if you played the game you can imagine what a pain it could be. The thing is that not all ghosts soar imposingly in the corridors. Some of them may appear only for a spare second, and if you didn't know that there was supposed to be a ghost, you would never be able to take a shot of them. A major part in building fear for players was really accurately placed camera angles. Just like many other games from that time, the game had fixed camera angles. But some of them were so well placed, even now the game has a truly cinematic feel sometimes. Sometimes you may experience even some directional features like Dutch angle to make players the sensation that something isn't right. The game doesn't have any music that sticks into your brain, as Silent Hill had for example. But nevertheless, the game had a very disturbing ambient combined with scratches and voices, as if someone is breathing or screaming. I should probably also point out that based on a true storyline that was not used until the game was advertised outside of Japan. It's not actually true. I mean, yeah, the game takes inspiration from local stories and urban legends, while also taking inspiration from personal experience. But I can hardly call it based on a true story. The Xbox release of Fatal Frame happened one year later after the PS2 release and had some changes and additional content. The viewfinder was also changed and, if you ask me, it looks better. 
Some new ghosts, including one new boss who supposedly lived in the mansion 40 years before the failed ritual, who tried to save a beloved maiden but failed and committed suicide. Also, some new notes were added. Besides that, players could find one more difficulty level called Fatal. And this name is literal, it's really hard to survive the encounter with a ghost on this level. And after finishing the game with this difficulty level, you'll see one new ending where Miko and Mafuyu survive and Kiryu meets her beloved one. It's also worth mentioning that some new costumes will be available. Being interested in Japanese mythology, culture and folklore, I tried to find sources of inspiration for the presented ghosts, but there are just some overlapping characteristics. Like ghosts from well, spooky noises and black hair all over the places. One more thing I would like to mention is that there is a light novel based on the game with Mafuyu as the main character. Unfortunately, it was officially published only in Japan and has only fan translations. All in all, Fatal Frame was quite a unique experience and, looking ahead, the following two installments will become even better. It had a different atmosphere, unusual setting, disturbing enemies, a unique weapon, and replayability. If you're not against old games and want to try something like this, I would definitely recommend trying it out. As for now, I would like to thank you for your attention. I would really appreciate if you could share this video for a couple of days or even if you feel that this video deserves it, recommend it to your friends. Once again, thank you for your attention ladies and gentlemen. See you in the next videos.